Good evening, good evening, good evening. So, just uh, see the cat leaving there. <laughs> cat being taken away. So, uh, good evening. Uh, tonight, I'm going to cover five things you le need to learn to improve your freediving. This week, I'm going to uh, concentrate on um, concepts. So, that's five concepts you need to learn. Learn's the wrong word. Five concepts you need to master uh, to progress with freediving. And I think I think I might do exactly the same session live stream on Wednesday for Jiu Jitsu. Because these these concepts are universal. Okay? These are universal concepts. Um, maybe maybe not the first one it isn't as universal as the others, but you get it. You get the idea. So, um, <clears throat> we've mentioned, I've mentioned many many times uh, about um, time and depth and being. How can I say? Uh, basically the only reason you have a time the only reason you know a depth is for ego okay it's the only reason it's for you to be able to tell your people down the pub i've dived this deep there is no other benefit from it and your concept of what a good time or a good depth is is 100 percent influenced by the people around you so if you're in two in you know 2003 when a three minute breath hold would get you to the world championships you know, oh, look at that i've done three minutes oh. now three minutes you know wouldn't win you a local competition so we've shifted equally well if you hang out um you know if you, if you hang out with people who aren't free divers and you hold your breath for for a minute and everybody else holds their breath for, for you know, 30 seconds. You're like, yeah, so I can hold my breath for a minute. You, you go to a club and, and the minutes, you know, it, it's, it's, it's nothing. So time and depth is only your perspective. And this problem of ego goes through all these five points that I'm going to make tonight. Okay, so I'm going to keep coming back to uh, the, the word ego. Okay, so first off, so number one out of five concepts you need to learn. Number one out of five concepts that you need to master, that's the word master, is when to turn. So one of the exercises we do quite a lot quite often is depth walks and I've, everybody should do this so after this session wrap up warm warm go outside to the front of your house and just do a depth walk if you're a no tanks member you'll know what it is it's very simple if you don't know what it is i'll explain now empty lung walk as far as you feel that you can before turning around and getting back to where you started without the briefest thought of, oh, how long do I have to walk? So your objective is to find that sweet spot on empty lung. So you breathe out everything, empty lung, and your objective is to find that sweet spot where you should turn around, that when you get back to the beginning, you haven't once even thought about or oh, how long is it to go if you're looking at the floor you know not once did you look up and go how far do I have to go and it's a really interesting exercise to do really simple and I'm gonna suggest you tonight straight after this live stream at 7 30 you go outside wrap up warm do it you're only going to do it maximum of three times twice or three times and then turn around and walk the other way up your road and do exactly the same thing and think 
you know, to get back without having thought, oh, I should, uh, you know, how far is it to go? Because when you're on your own, just doing it outside your house, we're, try we're trying to create uh, an environment where there is no ego. You don't know how far you should go. You don't know how far you can go. You might have just, you might be eating a meal now. So if you do it at 7.30, you've just eaten. So you're not going to, you're not going to, you know, walk you know, masses of distance because your belly's full of food. Blood's doing other things apart from breath hold. But it, so it gives you a beautiful opportunity to just think about how you feel about that breath hold when you turn around and walk back to the start. And then try it again with a friend. As soon as you have a friend there, your mindset will change. I guarantee it. Your friend might walk a certain distance. Now, you, 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 do, it, you do it in a park with them. Oh, you know, you're going to do it outdoors. You're going to do it in a park with them. And so it, has, it, it won't be a matter of, well, when I did it, you know, on a Monday night, I walked this far. You're going to be in a park. You're going to be in grass. There's no, there's no judgment. There's no way of judging how far it is. But I guarantee they do it. I guarantee you'll think, oh, I wonder if I can go that far. Oh, I wonder. That's a long way. I couldn't do that. And that's completely irrelevant to the exercise. The exercise is to find that sweet spot where you need to turn around to get back without even the thought of how far is it to go. So it's not it's not even a challenge of breath hold. It's not even a a challenge of how far can I do with it and still be relaxed. We're stepping it even further back. But as soon as you have a friend there, somebody else doing it, you're going, oh, that's, I wonder if I can do that. Or that's not very far. I'll, go, I'll probably go further than that. And it's completely irrelevant what they've done. Because they may have failed. They might have got back and had the thought, oh, Struf, I, uh, or on the way back, going, oh, Struf, I hope I'm there. I hope I'm nearly there. And so they may have failed. So they're not going to say anything. It's just in their mind. So, but that's how powerful the ego is. And you need to master that skill of when to turn around. Okay? So I'm, I am telling you, do it on your own. Once, twice. No more than that. And then a couple of days time, do it with a friend, do it with a buddy. Just notice how your brain works. That's all I'm asking. Asking. That's all I'm suggesting. Okay? You need to learn that when to turn around. When shall I turn around? When shall I turn around? And once you've started thinking that, once you start having that process of being aware of your breath hold, that's a skill that you would take on forever. Now, as I say, the five concepts I'm going to talk about tonight, number one is probably not transferable to like jujitsu. Uh, maybe it is, but maybe not. But the others are. But this one, when to turn. And it takes a lot to focus on yourself and your body and your breath hold. So when you take that into a free dive, you're going down, when shall I turn? You've got something that you did on a cold Monday night, you know, in December, to reference. Well, why did I turn it? How did it feel when I knew I know I you know when I knew I needed to turn around? And don't do it once, do it twice, because you may fail on the first one. And remember, a fail means you just had one single thought about how far I've got to go. Okay. If you uh, so you do it once, you fail. You may it may be super easy. You might only go on three paces and back, you know that that's 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 cool. But you weren't really playing the game, so you can't do it once. Okay, you've got to do it at least twice, maybe three, so you can reference back. You fail on the first one, you get it right on the second one. You cheat on the first one, you can do it really on the second one. Okay, that's it. And then do it with a friend and just analyze how your brain works. And you can't stop it. I'm not saying 
that you should stop it. When your friend does their walk and you go, wow, that's a bit long, I can't do that. Just to be aware of it. Okay, aware of it. Okay, so that's number five. Oop, wrong hand. Number five. Okay, so number uh, number four. In fact, number four and three, I'm going to do together because I didn't didn't know which order to do them. So I'm going to kind of do them together. And we've got relaxation and enjoyment. And these things are the easiest to say. And I have, you know, like... I've got loads of examples of it. I've been told years ago, oh, Marcus, you haven't got exclusive rights to enjoyment and relaxation, you know. And I never said I have, but um, I go on about it a lot. It's so easy to do. There's so many examples of other instructors um, online, instructional videos online, um, and people saying it's all about relaxation. It's all about enjoyment. But it's so difficult to actually put into practice so difficult but you've got to be aware of it so that you can start to master it okay so uh, relaxation what do we mean by relaxation it's really easy to say relax but let's have a look at uh, some statics so we've got these statics here so this is a classic oh by the way is all these stills I've taken from videos that are meant to be teaching you how to do statics okay these are instructional videos I've taken these from. So it's actually a great photo. It was a great film. But you can see that arm position. It's a classic first time uh, breath holder position. Okay. I'm not saying he's a first time breath holder. I'm just saying that's a classic first time breath holder position. But more than that, you get a lot of people who do this position in their first time breath hold. And then they come up and you say, oh, how was that? Were you relaxed? Yes, I was totally relaxed there's no way you can be relaxed like this the hands will be here if they're relaxed okay doesn't matter you can tell me if your wetsuit if you want you can tell me whatever there is no way that that is is kind of relaxed okay uh, here's another instructional video weird weird instructional video how to hold your breath for however many minutes it says you can see she's holding her arms back and her neck tension, she's got arm tension and neck tension um, and, and just a weird, weird position. Not as common as this, but reasonably common. Having the arms kind of pushed down and this is what's holding her in, in a kind of awkward place. And this is an instructional video about relaxation or allegedly about relaxation. Um, here's a more subtle one, so we're getting subtler and subtler, and you can see here there's uh, tension in uh, the hips, okay? So in somebody who's relaxed, and we've seen a photo in a minute of somebody who is relaxed, in other words, there's no tension in their main uh, muscles, there's tension in the hips. So if they were relaxed, their knees would be dropping slightly and their legs would be dropping, but more importantly, their knees would be dropping. So there's tension, clearly, you see somebody holding the breath like this, there's tension inside the, the hips, okay? And again, they'll say, ah, oh, you know, um, wetsuit, blah, 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 no, no way. There's tension in the hips. Okay. And again, this is a video uh, explaining how to, how to do static. Now, why have I picked static um, um, apnea? Because, it's the most uh, obvious way of seeing relaxation or lack thereof. And then here's a weird kind of video uh, competition thing. Now you can see the top person there. I guarantee they're going to come up. When I saw this, took the screenshot, guarantee they're going to come up first. Why do I guarantee they're going to come up first? And I, I don't know what the time is. I t especially took the screenshots. You couldn't see what the time was. I don't know what the time is. And I don't know how long they held their breath for. This isn't at the end of the breath hold this is at the beginning of the breath hold and i don't know how long they held their breath for but it was you know a significant amount of time that they you know so they could make the video but i guarantee that first per the person at the top is going to come up why because they've got tension in the hips remember the, the video before where i said the legs are kind of up and the, the knees should be dropping there's tension in the hips there's also tension in the neck so you can see the mask is not looking straight down the mask is like this 
there's tension there. And actually holding on the side of the pool is not a comfortable way of doing it. You can be reasonably relaxed with one hand on the side, but it's not preferable. I don't know what game they're playing, so maybe they had to have their hand on the side. It's, it's, it's whatever. But in this case, tension in the neck, tension hips, I guarantee they're going to come up first. The second person who's going to come up is a person in the bottom, the bottom right-hand corner there. Okay, uh, and why? Because there's tension in the hips again, pulling those legs up. Right. And do you want to see how your legs should be? The person in the middle. I guarantee they're going to come up third. Okay. So there is a beautiful picture. Three people, three stages of their relaxation uh, skills. Okay, the top one, beginning their their journey. Bottom one, a little bit better. There's a new relaxation in the neck and the shoulders. Third one getting the idea of the relaxation okay so relaxation super 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 easy to say it's all about relaxation really difficult to actually get it into the uh, your, your training um enjoyment so i'm not saying relaxation enjoyment they're both kind of you know two they're, they're number four and three and four of, of our of our five things you've got to master and I've got an example. Um, uh, enjoyment. People always say, "I, you know, I enjoy free diving," or it's all about enjoyment. But here's a question for you: When was the last time you did a breath hold, a static breath hold, without a clock? Without a clock anywhere. Just fully kitted up with a buddy in a pool session and just did a static without a clock anywhere involved. Now, if truly you enjoy statics and then even the next stage on, if you truly enjoy free diving, breath hold diving, you know, doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what type. If you enjoy free diving, then you should at some point have done that just for the enjoyment. True, okay. And anybody who says, "Oh, I don't like statics," what do you mean you don't like statics? How can you how can you say you free dive? How can you say that you um, you know enjoy free diving, but then clear out statics? I'm not saying do it for a long time. I'm not saying it doing for a short time. I'm just saying statics is part of free diving. You could do a quick one before a session, before everybody gets in, waiting for the instructor to turn up. Hey, dude, can you just watch me? I'm just going to do a static. Without a clock. Just because I like it. Just because I like holding my breath and relaxing. And this is relaxation and the, and the enjoyment going together. Yeah. And I learned this from Luik. So, um, I digress. So, we're on uh, you know, number four or number three, whichever. I will digress. I'll tell you this little story. Uh, Luik Lefemme. Uh, you know, world, world famous, world champion, world record holder. You know, the the depths he went to were, uh, you know, amazing. Like, and I was at his house. Uh, was I was staying with him? We were di- you know, in Nice. I was diving, and and while I was there, I was staying at his house. And the uh, we were cleaning his. We, we were fitting a floor actually. So that day we were sanding a floor. We were knackered, covered in sawdust and varnish or whatever we were doing. He said, man, I, I just need to go. I need to get in the water. I need to get in the water. I need to go diving. And this was when I first kind of met him. And I was like, cool, I'm going to dive with Luke. I'm going to dive with Luke. Yeah, yeah, kind of, let's get killed up. Let's get diving with Luke. Went down to the port. He got his uh, got his suit on. And I got my suit on. And, and this is, yeah, I was, I was a newbie. I was like, oh, we're going to do And I was like, he's not going to take the boat out. What do you mean he's not going to take the boat out? He's... he's Okay, he's not going to... Okay, we've got another another thing going on here. We're not going to go out on the boat. And he just slipped into the water, in the port, in his suit. Just held his breath. Just flowed around, in the port. Like, I mean, it's a clean port, don't get me wrong. It's uh, they're, all, they're all sailing boats there. There's nothing... There's no... It's clean water, but it's still the port. And, and you know he kind of came up and oh yeah that was beautiful you want to go Marcus I went yeah yeah okay 
and then and I kind of came up and he said, oh, it feels so good. Okay, guys, let's go. Let's go and have dinner. And that was it. That was it. He just enjoyed free diving so much. We walked from his house, 10 minute walk, get suited up, just to be in the water, holding his breath. When was the last time you did that? And now answer the question, do you enjoy free diving? Do you enjoy statics? When was the last time you did without a clock? Oh yeah. So really easy to say, it's all about enjoyment. Really hard to actually put into practice. Okay, so, I mean, we're cracking on here. Um, number two and number one. Again, I'm going to put these together. There's, there, there's a hierarchy. There's no hierarchy here. Honesty and awareness. Now, this, these are the two you need, and they go back into the relaxation. So, those photos I, I've shown you, um, uh, the static photos, um, you know, these people, I'm not going to say they're not honest. And this this is video. Uh, I don't think the guy made the video. I think he's just in in the video. Just one of the guys. So he's not lying. He's unaware. He's not being dishonest. He's unaware. She is unaware that she's got tension. They, she, them, they are unaware that they've got tension. Okay. So honesty and awareness. We're looking at awareness there. They're unaware. So you they need a coach. They need a coach just to say a little bit of tension there. And and a, and a and a physical coach may move them around, may give them some exercises, but they need a coach, somebody they trust to just say there's tension there. There's tension in your hips. Let it go. Step one. So this is awareness. Now, as we as we learn, as we progress, you need to be more and more aware of yourself. Because if you haven't got aware to, to to improve in any sport, you need awareness. Then you need to acknowledge it. So I, you know, I can tell somebody that they're tense. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm tense. Okay. At one point, they're going to acknowledge it and go. I'm tense. And then, third part is adaptation. Then they can change their system. Then their body can change. Awareness, acknowledgement, adaptation. Okay. So awareness is so, so, so important. Okay, the other thing that is either one or two, I don't know which way around they are, is um, honesty. Now, I had a, a question on on uh, through Facebook, through through one of the, the videos, and it just made me think. Just gave me a beautiful idea of how I can describe honesty. So, imagine you do a dive to say we we'll just pick a random random dive. We do a dive to say forty meters. Come up, and you t oh, that is amazing. Show people the depth on your computer. Somebody says, oh yeah. 40 meters and you say yeah yeah it's easy it's easy it's easy you can you can tell any you can tell yourself it was easy all right but if it wasn't easy when you get back on the rope the next time when you're holding the rope and you're going to do that dive again doesn't matter how many people you told it was easy. Doesn't matter how many, how many kind of people slap you on the back and say, "Yeah, you're awesome." If it was a difficult dive on that rope, your subconscious knows it was a difficult dive. Hadn't been honest. It's a difficult dive, and there's no way you can get relaxation into that dive. No way. Because you know, in your heart of hearts, it was hard dive the last time you did it. You're just not going to get relaxed. All right? So you may go deeper on that dive. You may go deeper and deeper. But that tension will be building up. You cannot get relaxed on it. 
because you know it was tough. If I say you're, tomorrow you're going to do something and it's going to be tough, there's no way you can go, it's all right, it's going to be tough, I'm going to be relaxed about it. You're not. You're going to be, there's going to be tension there because you know you're just about to do something that's tough. Okay, scenario two. You dive to 40 meters. You come up and you admit it's hard. You get rid of the ego. You admit it's hard. That was hard. Hmm? Goes back to the first point when you're with your buddy and your buddy's just done 40 meters and he kind of came up whistling. It was super easy for him. You do 40 meters. It's hard to get rid of your ego and say, yeah, that was hard. But if you can be honest about it and say it was hard, then you can work out why it was hard. You can start thinking about it was hard and start why it was hard. My legs gave out. My legs gave out. Or whatever it was. My arms, if I was putting my arms gave out. Whatever it was. And then you can go away and work on that thing. If you are honest and admit why it was difficult, then you can work on why it was difficult. So if your legs or if your arms were knackered, it doesn't take long to get a little bit more strength into them, a little bit more fitness in, in that area. All right? It doesn't take long. It take a couple of weeks. Two weeks. And you can do the dive again. Now, you said it was hard. You were honest about how hard it was. And you've been working on your leg strength or your arm strength for two weeks. Only two weeks. And you do the dive again. It may still be hard, but it'll be a little bit easier. a little bit easier so you can go yeah i did it and it was a little bit easier i know i'm doing the right thing if it's not any easier then you go, okay maybe i'm not doing the right thing it's still hard let me work out why it was hard and you can work on it all right so honesty and awareness they go hand in hand. That's your number one and number two. Sorry, number one and number two. Most important things you've got to master. Honesty and awareness. And watch out. Watch out for that scary word there. Because that's going to get in your way every time. Right. So, honesty and awareness, number one and two. Number three and four, relaxation and enjoyment. The two easiest things to say that that's what you're doing. The two hardest things to actually implement in your diving. And number five, know when to turn. It's a feeling. It's awareness of yourself. So also, you have to be really honest about it. Of course, you also have to be relaxed about it. And the fact that I'm guessing, I'm guessing... Darren, who we got online? Darren, Alicia, and maybe a couple of the others, but I guarantee those two are going to put their coats on and go out and do it. Right now, they're going to do what I just suggested, well, what I suggested right at the beginning, because they love it. They enjoy it. I'm not saying the other people don't. They're, they're literally the first two people who are on, the, on, on my live chat here. They enjoy it. So they're going to go and do it. Take them five minutes. And they may come back and go, I didn't quite see what Marcus means. And then they'll email me because they enjoy it. They want to know. Okay, so a couple of questions. Uh, David, uh, loving this 20 minutes behind. Okay, so in 20 minutes, you'll see me read your message. Uh, Ted, sorry, missed the beginning of the stream, but uh, I would abort the dive at a point it became hard. At what point does it become about meeting the goal? and going with feelings. It never, never, ever, never, ever meeting the goal. Except the goal is the feelings. So, you dive. If you're not feeling it, you stop the dive. It doesn't matter whether you're, uh, like, next to next to the objective. So, if you're going to the reef to take a photograph, doesn't matter if you get there. Oh, bail. Doesn't matter if you're halfway there. Doesn't mean if you're on the surface. If you're not got those... Uh, you know, the, the enjoyment there and to, to depending on what the exercise is you know, or the dive is, you know, relax as much of the relaxation as you can get there, or you should have there. You've got to be honest about it. 
You've got to be aware of them, those, those feelings. Honest about it, call to dive. The goal is always just, just a random thing that somebody's picked. Whether it's competition, whether it's a, a fish that you're trying to catch or, or photograph. It's, it's a, the goal, it's just a random thing. It's just a random thing. Nobody knows whether that fish was there or not. Right. So, at what point does it become hard? You don't stop where it becomes hard. It, it, the question doesn't kind of make sense. It's kind of backwards. Um, you're going to do a long swim. You're going to do a long dynamic. It's going to get hard. So you don't stop when it gets hard. But if you've done a, a lot of long swings, you understand, okay, it's hard. But be honest about it, it's, 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 as, uh, you know, it's not as hard as it was, um, you know, before. And, and, and I know that I've still got some in my legs to keep going. I'm not saying last time you did that de distance. I'm just saying last time you did a dive or once you did a dive, it was hard in your legs and you're okay. So it's that honesty, it's awareness, that honesty. And that comes with experience. And this is what very scary with, with freediving as, as opposed to other sports. If you get somebody who hasn't got those that experience, then it's very difficult to make the right decision, the right call. And this is why we play games in the club. We don't just do up and down a rope or up and down the pool because there's very little input, very little uh, variations in there. So you just haven't got the experience, right? You haven't got that experience. So the longer you dive, if you're diving properly, and I don't mean just diving, you know, a lot, diving a lot with purpose. Go see the, the, earlier, the earliest lockdown videos we did where we talked about uh, purposeful practice. Right? So you can build up your experience, your awareness of yourself, and then you can decide whether this is hard or whether it's hard. And if it's hard, you've got to stop. If it's just hard, it's hard. But it's the same with all sports. You know, when you're running a marathon, you're running 10 miles in, it's going to be hard. But is it hard or is it hard? The only difference is with freediving, if you make the wrong call, end of. With running a marathon, you make the wrong decision, you don't make the end of the marathon. Yeah. So that's why it's so, so much more important with freediving than other sports. Because if you made a wrong call, ah, just say uh, reward the... <laughs> if you said it before, re re rewind the thread. No, I haven't said it before. It was a really good question, Ted. Thank you very much. Uh, at what point does it become meeting the goal? Yeah, I've literally answered that. Um, uh, Alethea, I think I know when to turn, but I can't say why. It's a bit of a gut fit. Exactly exactly that's enough it's the gut feeling ah, i need to turn you don't need to understand what the gut feeling is but the important thing is say let's take the depth walk you do the depth walk you think ah, i should turn you turn you get back and then you analyze it you stand there and go did i that feeling i had when i turned was that the correct moment to turn I've come back to the beginning and, and it really, really was easy. I mean, that was really easy. So that feeling I had wasn't quite, wasn't quite right. Or you get back to the beginning. Was that the right point to turn? I, it's a little bit hard, actually, getting back to the, back to the start. It's a little bit hard, harder than I wanted it to be. So that feeling I had was I'd gone too far. Right? So it doesn't matter about, you don't want to analyse what the feeling was is being aware of it coming back to the beginning and being honest about it that feeling I had was actually wasn't uh, you know you should turn it was you should turn soon or it wasn't that wasn't a feeling of you know you should turn it was man you should have already turned okay. so yes it's a gut feeling and that's the joy of the way we learn because it changes every day. You've had a big meal. It's cold outside. It's warm outside. You haven't had a big meal. You know, you're tired. Your head's not in it. 
all these are variations. So you can still go and do it now and you will learn vast quantities from doing it. Okay, so that's it. So um, um, that's kind of what I want to go on about. Next week, next week, I'm going to I'm going to do five skills that you should master. So these are five concepts that you should master. Next week, it's five skills you should master. Okay. Um, any questions, as always, put them uh, on the, in the chat or as a message. And I will hopefully get back to them. If they're good questions, like um, uh, I think it was uh, Ui asked me one of the questions if I, I'll put it in the live stream um, hopefully see you Thursday for the Christmas party there's a prize for the best dressed and don't forget to bring your weights um, Thursday be there at 7 30 uh, I think there's a couple of tickets left which is surprising for our no tanks Christmas party mini party COVID safe party come in your Best dressed, and I'll see you Thursday. Thank you very much. See you next week. Ciao, ciao.